Hi everyone. Um, we just wanted to give our part, our testimony about what happened for us during the 40 days, and we hope you guys are having a great time today, sharing together and celebrating together. Um, for us, the 40 days, like Dave said, was pretty amazing. Our whole family has been changed, not just by the change in our diet, but just the change in energy as a result of that. The weight loss has been pretty amazing as well, but we know that's a long way uh, from where we want to be and we'll have to continue. But it's been a great time. The other part of it, of course, has been that we've felt a renewal in our spiritual lives as we have sought the Lord together and sought healing together. And I feel that God is really moving in our midst during this time. And, and I have just been so blessed to be a part of the small groups, to be a part of what God is doing in our church. And um, as many of you know, I, I had a miraculous healing in my life back in uh, 2008, 9, 2009. And uh, God radically changed my life at that point. If you knew me then, you knew I was in constant pain as a result of fibromyalgia. And um, like we say, you know, it's a disease that doesn't kill you, but sometimes you wish it would because you're in so much pain. And I had gotten to the point where some days I could hardly walk. Some days I couldn't get out of bed. It was just a rough, rough time. And um, so through a lot of prayer and a, and a friend who just was determined God wanted to heal me, God did that. We went to a, a conference, and it was an evangelistic conference, and at the end they just prayed for people who needed healing, and God chose to heal me. And it was an amazing, amazing thing. I've never experienced something quite that dramatic um, and life-changing other than um, my salvation. And it was just so unreal how um, I went from one minute being in such agony that I literally wanted just to fall on the floor and cry and and give up. I mean, I just could barely stand there to the next, about 10 minutes later, being able to walk up three flights of stairs without any pain for the first time in probably 15 years. And um, that was unbelievable. But then what happened after that, I wasn't quite prepared for. And so um, I'm going to share with you just a very quick message, and the notes are in your bulletin if you want to follow along, about preparing for the battle. Because, you know, the enemy is not pleased with what God has been doing in our midst. And so he does. He fights against what God is doing. And he tries to steal it. He tries to... Um, kill our joy, kill our uh, passion for what God is doing, and kill our faith, and sometimes literally try to kill us. Um, but Satan is our enemy, and we need to understand the battle is real. And I was not prepared for that. I, no one had ever told me that there was such a battle coming, and maybe I should have known it, but I, it just kind of blindsided me. And I mean literally a few minutes after being healed, um, the enemy was attacking. And with fibromyalgia, I don't know if you know much about it, but it comes and goes. There's a, what we call flare-ups. And for me, I had 24-7 pain, but then I would have flare-ups that made the pain so much worse. And that's when I would have so much trouble. And so the first thing he started doing was saying, well, the flare-up's over. And this is just, you know, it going back to a lower level of pain. But I said, but I realized, no, um, not a lower level of pain. I had no pain, and I just kept claiming, God, I know you healed me. And I would go back to the experience I had and, and just relive it in my mind and remember what it was like um, that moment when I received that healing. But I want to go through a few things. This is a scripture maybe you're familiar with that you have heard before, that you've read before, and I'm, I'm looking at my notes over here. Um, but... I want us to look together, first of all, at the scriptures um, found in Ephesians. And it's Ephesians, and it's talking about the armor of God. Um, it says, in, this is in your bulletin, and you can follow along. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on 
the, every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle you will stand you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And this is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. So when we began this journey of healing in my life, um, it was literally a constant battle every day. Satan was trying to tell me it wasn't real, that it was all in my mind, that it was the flare-up would come back, that I would once again be practically um, having to be in a wheelchair and give up my life. And, um, and I had to put on the armor of God. I had to put on the things that this scripture tells us. So the first thing is to be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. That is key to the beginning because it's not by our power, not by might, but by the Spirit that we can live our lives as Christians victoriously. And so it is by God's power. Be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Trust Him and recognize He is all-powerful. We aren't relying on our strength. We're relying on His. And so that's the first thing we have to realize if we're going to have a victorious life after healing. Um, put on the full armor of God so you can fight against Satan. And we need to make sure we put on every piece of armor that we have. And by, by that, I don't mean every morning get up and, I mean, some people do this and that is fine. Go through the whole thing and think, do I have this on? Do I have that on? But what it, it means is that we understand what our faith is and what our life with God is. And we're not just having part of it. There's some people who live their whole Christian lives just going to church on Sunday, sitting in a pew um, or a chair, and never understanding the fullness of knowing God every day, of experiencing Him every day. And to me, that's part of what the full armor is all about, is that we're fully equipped. We're fully following God. We're fully dedicated to Him. We're living our lives as living sacrifices dedicated to Him. So to me, the full armor is is that kind of understanding of what it means to be a Christian. And um, so put on the full armor so that we can fight against Satan and win. And number three, put on the belt of truth. Hold on to the truth of God. Of course, the, the truth of God is the Word of God. We need to know it. Um, we need to hold on to His promises so that Satan's lies are powerless. Um, remember when Jesus was tempted in uh, Matthew chapter 4? He was tempted in the desert by Satan, and he combated Satan's attacks with the Scripture. We need to do the same thing. What makes us think we can't? Um, fight Satan, you know, that we can fight him in some other way when Jesus used the word of God. We need to do the same thing. It strengthens us and it cripples him. And so we need to do the same thing. Number four, put on the body armor of God's righteousness. I love this. Our main body armor is his righteousness. And, and Dave has said it many times that it is not our righteousness, it is his. When God looks at us, he sees Christ's righteousness and not ours. And thank goodness. Um, we are healed because of God's goodness, not ours. And there are people who tell you that you're not healed because you don't have enough faith. You're not healed because you're not good enough. But the Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches if you have even the smallest amount of faith, that God can move mountains through you. And so we don't have to worry about our righteousness before God as long as we have Jesus Christ. We rely on His righteousness, His power, and His healing because of His goodness. And the focus is always on Him, and a healing is always to bring glory to Him and not to us. It says rely on the righteousness of God that makes you righteous, and, and just thank God that it's not that we have to be good enough to receive healing. And then number five, put on the shoes of peace. This is threefold in a healing because the shoes of peace refer to the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So, of course, knowing Christ is the most important thing. And our first part of healing is that we are healed in knowing Christ. We are spiritually made whole, made new creations. And there are many times that when people come to Christ, they are healed um, 
of many things, not just salvation, given salvation, but they are healed of, of other things. Uh, when Dave came to Christ, God healed him in one day of um, some bad habits of smoking and <laughs> drinking and all kinds of things. God changed his life, and I've known many friends who've had that same experience. But the first part of that healing is that we become God's children, that we become um, his friends through salvation, and we find spiritual healing. And of course, that is way bigger than any other kind of healing we could ever imagine, because he did create in us a new life and make us a new cre creation. Um, secondly, we'll be permanently healed in heaven. And I think that is important to realize. Um, you know, about four or five years ago, we prayed for my mom to be healed, and she's been suffering a long time with lung disease and um, on oxygen, and when we prayed for her, God answered partially. He took away her immediate pain. She was in excruciating pain because the medicine she was on had caused her bones to crumble, and she had lost about four vertebrae in her back, and she was in agony all the time, and God immediately took that pain away. And we were very blessed for what he did, and he told us at that time, too, several of us felt that he had said she would have at least five more years. And the doctors at that time had sent her home to die. And he did. He gave us five more years. But I always knew that her ultimate healing would be when she was with him. And I know now that she is completely healed. And uh, we've been joking about how she's dancing up in heaven because she was raised Southern Baptist. And in her church growing up, you know, dancing was a sin. And she kept teasing me last summer that she better start practicing dancing because she had a feeling she was going to do a lot of that in heaven and so we know that now she is that she is completely restored to complete um, health and joy and um, health in every way spiritually she is perfect and physically she is perfect now and rejoicing with him and so um, our permanent healing will be in heaven these bodies give us trouble these bodies fail us sometimes they're temporary and so we have to understand that. And then thirdly, as we are healed in this life, as we go through the ups and downs, and as we suffer at different times, we carry peace throughout this life. And there is a watching world out there watching how we respond to the pain, to the difficulties, to the hurts of this life. But when they see that we have a peace that surpasses all understanding, it is a testimony to God's goodness in this world and in our lives. And so we carry that peace. It says uh, on your slide, a peace, oh, you may not have the slides, I realize, but if you do, it says, a peace the world does not understand, and whether we are healed physically now or not, we have peace. Let God's peace rule in your hearts. And then we hold up the shield of faith. Um, we extinguish Satan's fiery arrows, and I love that because if you think about it, it doesn't just like, I always picture a shield and, and the arrows come at the shield and they bounce off. And if they're fiery arrows, I think of them catching the ground on fire. But the Bible says very clearly we, that the shield of faith extinguishes Satan's fiery arrows. It doesn't bounce them off so they can hit something else or cause trouble somewhere else. It extinguishes them. And that to me is so powerful. Um, we don't just endure the fiery arrows. They are useless. And uh, no matter what Satan throws at us, we hold on to our faith and we remember that God is in control. We also need to remember that Satan wants to steal and destroy our testimony. And if we don't extinguish those arrows, he will do damage to God's kingdom. He will do damage to our testimony. And it will hinder what God is trying to do through our lives and in the lives of those around us. So we need to stand firm at all times and um, accept that God is in control. Number seven, put on, this, on salvation as your helmet. Um, our salvation covers our head, and where our head is, that's where our mind is. And so this goes directly to the scriptures that we were talking about recently, um, that we need to take every thought captive, because one of Satan's desires is to cause us to doubt 
God, to doubt the testimony that God has given us, to doubt the word of God that we know and he has placed in our lives. And so um, we need to hold on to the word of God and take every thought captive. We need to weigh every thought against the word of God. And if it's contrary to the word of God, we need to throw it out and um, have victory in our minds. Um, hold on to what God has done in your life uh, when he first entered your heart and freed you from sin, as well as what he is continuing to do day by day in your life and as a testimony to those around you. God is at work, and God is using your life. If you will just submit to him and, and let him, he has amazing things he wants to do. And then number eight, take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And um, so we need to use that as our weapon, as we were talking about before. So we need to do several things. Um, it's not that we can hit Satan over the head with our Bible. It's that we need to know what's in the Bible. So we need to read it. That's number one. Read it. Um, use it against the enemy. Quote it. Um, know it and say it. Say it aloud. Um, this is very powerful. It, it not only... Um, counteracts what the enemy is saying to us, but we hear ourselves say the truth, speak the truth, and it empowers us, and it gives us more strength. So it's a really important thing to say it aloud um, and memorize it. We, we need to hide God's Word in our heart. We need to memorize it and know it without always having to look it up. It needs to be a part of our lives. We need to meditate on it and think about it. By meditate on it, that means to fill our minds with the Word of God and to think about what it's really saying and what it really means. Don't just read it and go on, but really chew on it for a while. And to remember that it is our, our weapon. Um, some say it's our only weapon. I think we have two weapons, and one is um, the Word of God, and the second one is number nine, pray. It says always pray. And I feel that is our only other weapon is is to pray. It says pray at all times and stay alert. We don't want to be caught off guard like I was um, when it comes to the enemy's attacks. We need to be prepared and we need to know that he is going to attack and we need to be pre prepared with the word of God and prayer for the battle that is ahead of us. And finally, stand firm. The whole purpose of the armor of God is that we can stand firm Rejoice in your healing and stand firm. The victory has already been won. Don't doubt it. Hold on. I know that many of you have had some great things happen in your lives during this 40 days, and even before the 40 days, God has healed you of different um, things in your life, whether it's helping you find forgiveness uh, for your own sin or being able to forgive someone else, have healing in your relationships, uh, having healing physically, um, emotionally, whatever it has been, you need to know that you, there is a battle, and the battle is real, but that we have the victory because of Jesus Christ. He is the victor, and if we will hold on to his word and stand firm in his word and his truth, we can walk in victory day by day. I hope that you guys have been so blessed during this 40 days. And for those of you who want to continue this amazing journey, um, like we said before, we will continue with a men's group and a women's group on Tuesday nights um, starting next week. So we hope to see you there if you're able to make it. We're going to be looking at some other books that are just really good in helping us continue this journey of health. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. And I just want to say thank you for all of you who have sent condolences and your uh, love our way during this time. We love you. Bye.